morning friendship. I have a couple of cards to read prior to reading the announcements. Thank you, Reverend P and the Friendship Family. Thank you so very much for your prayers, calls, and thoughts as I went through my surgery and continue to recuperate. May God bless you all in a special way. I the only and family. Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, because of you, there's someone who is thanking God today. Someone who appreciates your warm and caring way. Someone who's remembering the special things you do and wishing you his blessings every day and the whole year through. Thank you for all of your prayers, calls, texts, and gifts as I am healing. I love and appreciate you all. Love, Sister Monique Perkins. Good morning. We welcome you to the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 1111 Granger Road, Conway, South Carolina. We thank God for your presence today in the sanctuary, those listening by telephone or on social media. There are a few announcements to share before we begin our worship service. Bible study will continue Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. <coughs> Brotherhood meeting on Thursday, April 18th at 7 p.m. We are asking each member to become involved with some organized church in our group, in, organized group in our church. To do so not only strengthens the organization, it also creates a stronger fellowship bond, causing one to feel a greater sense of belonging. Let us continue to lift these persons in prayer as they face challenges in, in, in their lives. Sister Ramona Baskin, Brother Bobby Washington, Brother James Smith, Sister Stella Carter, Sister Cynthia Simmons, Brother Ivioni, Brother Kenny Chestnut, Sr., Sister Ida May Britton, Brother Ike Quamley, Sister Dolores Moore, Sister Christy Romas, Brother Keith, Brother David Keith, Sister Sarah Graham, Sister Elizabeth Graham, Sister Lillian Stanley, Sister Queenie Jones, Sister Louise Ellaby, Brother Joe Smalls, Sister Beatrice Bellamy, Sister Lubell Ford, Sister Margaret Manny, Sister Johnny Rogers, Johnny Bridges, I'm sorry, Sister Maxine Dotton, Deacon George Parker, Reverend Dr. Covia Stanley, Reverend Lonnie B. Chestnut, Brother Kim Myers, Sister Jolene Kelly, Sister Irene Sharp, Brother Norman Fields, and our pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles M. P. and family. Pray much for the families of Reverend Odell Bradley, Brother Bill Graves, Sister Misty Ellaby, and the Sherman family, Sister Appel Brown, and Sister Rachel Ballard. Please continue to reach out to our sick and shut-in. A personal visit, call, text message, or sending a greeting card can mean so much. All members are asked to call the church if you are sick or have death in the family in order that our pastor and members can share in your hour of distress. Our lives are filled with, filled with challenges, but in all that we are going through, with God's help, we will get through this together. Are there any visitors worshiping with us this morning? Would you please stand? No visitors? Let us all have a blessed day in the Lord. Pastor? Being here on this blessed Lord's Day, I have one special announcement just before uh, we begin with our worship service. A lot of times when we have announcements, sometimes it's some bad news or either we're asking everybody to give a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, something like that, you know. And I know you wouldn't mind it if I asked that this morning. You hear Deacon Johnson laughing over there. He's feeling the spirit right now. Amen. 
even Brother Perkins laughing over there. But, but I'm thankful to share with you that a week and a half ago, by the mercy and the grace of God and your commitment, the mortgage on the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 1111 Granger Road, Conway, South Carolina, was paid off. Paid off. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but that's worth shouting about. And throughout the pandemic, I want you to know that we never missed a payment and was never late on a payment. And by the power of God and the commitment of the members of this church. I know sometimes we don't say it often enough. But thank you, thank you, thank you. God has been mighty good to us. And the Lord is still keeping us. I had some members a couple of years ago uh, fussing with me just a little bit. They thought we ought to have some church transportation. I said, well, let's pay for the church and get off, pay this note off, and we can get some transportation. But now that we've paid it off, guess what? We can buy three or four buses now. <laughs> God bless you. Again, we thank God for you this morning. And I also want to say that Miss High Point is here. Miss High Point. Now, Miss High Point, now you know I know you by High Point. Tell me your real name. Linda Lewis. Linda Lewis, amen. And and when and when Linda Lewis is not here. She's in high point looking at us online. She's a wonderful spirit. We thank God for being here this morning. We appreciate her so very much, and we thank God for each and every one of you. May we all stand together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And now with our prayer of preparation, we're going to ask Minister Edna Bellamy to lead us in prayer.
at this time our hymn of praise my faith looks up to thee may we sing with uplifted voices this morning You may be seated. At this time, our scripture will be read by Minister Alberta Bellamy, will then be led in prayer by Reverend Dr. Stanley. scripture reading this morning will be coming from Acts of the Apostle. I will be reading into your hearing Acts chapter 5 verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both 
of men and women. This is the word of God for the people of God. Things are possible 
when we have faith, when we have hope, when we have trust and belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, if there are any ministers with us, you may come to the pulpit. You're welcome to come to the pulpit this morning. If there are any ministers here. And at this time, our wonderful R.J. Daniels chorus will lead us in singing. Oh, he 
will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. Whatever it is, Jesus, he will fix it. Whatever it is, Jesus, he will fix it. My God can fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. See, I thought. My God was limited. Jesus, he will fix it. I can give him a headache. Jesus, he will fix it. I can give him a stomachache. Jesus, he will fix it. I found now. Jesus, he will fix it. My God can do anything. Jesus, he will fix it. Anything you need. I know he will. Jesus, he will fix it. I know he will. Jesus, he will fix it. I know God will. Jesus, he will fix it. The reason I know. Jesus, he will fix it. He did it for me, y'all. Jesus, he will fix it. He did it for me, y'all. The crossroads in my life. Jesus, he will fix. Standing there just wondering Jesus, he will fix. which way could I go? Jesus, he will fix. I had trouble on the left side. Jesus, he will fix. Trouble on the right. Jesus, he will fix. And I couldn't go far. church say amen let the church say amen let me just ask here is sister Marie Hatfield here uh, sister Hatfield would you come to the front seat and if you have somebody with you, you can bring them with you too. Yeah, that'll be all right. Now, sister, I know you want to know why am I calling Sister Hatfield to come sit on the front seat. Sister Hatfield was to receive the right hand of fellowship on last Sunday, and we extended the right hand of fellowship to five other people, and we missed Sister Hatfield. So I promise you, Sister Hatfield, we're going to extend it to you today. Let us give Sister Hatfield a great big hand. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord loveth the cheerful giver, 
And this is a time in our worship experience where we can all worship God together and won't get in each other's way. We are called upon to give lovingly, caringly, sacrificially. And, and that's what I was trying to say a little earlier. We were able to pay the mortgage off on this church because that was the way you have given. I say it all the time. God did not call upon us to sell chicken dinners and fish sandwiches, not even goat sandwiches. God calls upon us to give lovingly and caringly. And we thank God for the gifts that you've given, and the tithes and offerings. Now as our ushers are now coming, may we all stand. We're going to ask Reverend Chestnut to, to come and lead us in this offertory prayer. Precious Father in heaven, you have taught that we should always give. Give a portion back to thee that has been given to us. We pray for the giver. We pray for those who have it and those that do not have it. That we bless us all in our storehouses. And may the money be used for the furtherance of your cake of your earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. You give us your all that we may be blessed. All these blessings we ask in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. It's always a, a blessing to dedicate a child in the house of the Almighty God. Some people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples scolded the people. When Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, let the children come to me. Do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children and his arm placed his hands on each of them and bless them. Now at this time, I want to ask the entire family, parents of Demoni, Taylor Brown, to come to the front. children ought to be dedicated unto God. Would you stand right here?
we thank God for this very lovely child, Damani Taylor Brown, who is very alert <laughs> and watchful. We thank God for this little one. Let me say this at the very beginning here, that children ought to be not only dedicated to God, but bought to church. Just like these parents bought this little one to the church, that's what ought to happen to all of our children. We ought not wait the children get to be 18 and 19 and start getting in trouble and then we want to bring them to church. We need to bring them early. Early. I hope nobody gets angry with me. But if you do, I declare it's all right. <laughs> we got to train them early. Got to train them early. Let us pray. God of our fathers and of our children, with joy we praise you. We thank you, we honor you for your love which has made us and supports us. We praise you for your gifts of life embodied in this child. We thank you, God of our fathers, and our children with joy we praise you we thank you we honor you forever we thank God for these parents the, the mom lovely mother Dominique Riggins okay it's Riggins and also the father Trustin Brown, God bless you. And by coming forward before God and his people, to these two lovely parents, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, we do. Could you say it a little louder? God bless you. God bless you. Very important, not only to bring the child to church, but if parents are going to be good parents, you too need the support of the church. Amen. Having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that Damani Taylor Brown may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you, Dominique Riggins, Trustin Brown, vow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide Damani Taylor Brown a Christian home of love and peace to raise him in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage him to one day trust Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. Would both of you respond by saying, we will. God bless you. God bless you. Now to this entire congregation, beloved in the Lord, do you earnestly promise to support this family in faithful prayer, Christian teaching, wholesome example 
If so, would you respond by saying, we will. We will. God bless you. God bless you. Now, at this time, I also want to just say a word to, I think we have grandparents who are here, Victor and Jenny Sumter. Would you raise your hands? Yeah. And also other grandparents, uh, Jana Riggins and Clayton McCray. They're not here. Okay, okay. Well, you tell them what I say. <laughs> now, there's an old saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Two parents can't raise a child by yourself. You need the church. You need the community to raise a child. Need all of us in that little community I grew up in. If somebody saw me cutting up, they, we didn't have no cell phones. But before I could get home, they'd go to my home and tell my parents on me. I didn't appreciate that. I thought they were kind of getting in my way. But as I grew old, I said, you know, that helped be a blessing unto me. It takes a village to raise a child. And to these parents, now I'm telling you straight up, these children need to be in church every Sunday. Y'all... Y'all got so quiet on me. I'm going to say it again. Children need to be in church every Sunday. Amen. Now that doesn't guarantee that they're going to dot every I and cross every T. But I tell you what, it sure will help. Children need to be in church. And I'm not talking... To just this little one here, I'm talking to all children need to be in church every Sunday. Are the godparents here? Jamila Swinton, uh, Russia Brown, and Krishan Sanders? Yeah, but Miss Jamila is here. Now, to be a godparent is to say, I will help and assist all I can in the raising of this child. And if anything were to happen to these parents, and we pray nothing will, I'll be willing to step in and raise this child as my own. So now to be a godparent, that's an awesome responsibility. I think about my own grandmother. She raised every one of her sisters and brothers. She was the only mama they knew. I guess in a way she was like a godmother. And you know what else she would do? She fed them good, clothed them good, and when necessary, she punished them good. A good godmother, godfather, loves the child as his or her very own. So, Miss Jamila, you have an awesome responsibility. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Damani Taylor Brown. Help him, O oh Lord, to grow in spirit and in truth. Help him not to get caught up 
with an ungodly crowd doing ungodly things. Lead him in the way that you would have him to go. And oh God, help the church to be there. Help us to know that these children belong to us because they're yours. Bless him, oh God. Bless these parents and help them, oh God, to walk the walk and talk the talk of Christian love and Christian faith. And oh God, help us. Help us to be your church in loving and caring for these children. And oh God, help every parent, not just these two parents, but help every parent to recommit him or herself today to teach children, to love them, and to help them to be committed to you, O oh Lord. And oh God, we'll ever trust you. We'll ever love you. Praise your holy name. In the name of our Lord, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, let me uh, bring that baby close here. That's all right. We got it. Okay. All right, big baby. All right. Now, I want this family here, come by and give these parents and this baby a big Holy Ghost hug. Now, where are our deaconesses? I want to ask our deaconesses to come to the front now. Now, as these parents, I want you to notice, these people are here, we are here as a church. And we want to see this baby every Sunday, we want to see the parents every Sunday. Now y'all go ahead and give all of these parents a big Holy Ghost hood. Okay.
let us give these parents and this wonderful baby a great big hand. God bless you. God bless you. It's always a special time in church life when children are presented unto the Lord. We ought not ever take that for granted. One old preacher once said, he said, any church where you never hear a baby cry is a dying church. Amen. 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 So we ought to be always be thankful for these little ones and as these parents present their little ones unto the Lord. At this time, the choir will lead us in singing. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. And I'm going more and more each day. There were many that started out with me. But now they've gone astray. But I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to God's hand. You see, when I was young, I gave God my hand and I told Him to lead the way. Though the road has been rough And the going's been mighty tough Still I ain't going nowhere I'm right here to stay Though I've been talked about and oh, I've been criticized I've had to wipe many tears from my eyes But I'm still holding on I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to God's hand.
And I'm still holding on. Yes, I'm still in God's holy place. I'm still holding on, and I'm bound for the promised land. I will never, I will never let go. trials and tribulations I'm still I'm still holding on yes I'm still in God's holy plan for you scandalize my name I'm still holding on and I'm still in the promised land I will never will never let Let the church say amen. amen. That's right, baby. That's right. The Spirit of the Lord speaks to us today from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. Let, let me read that again. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes both of men and women. I want to share an idea for a few minutes today. I want to talk about faith of a young church faith of a young church. 
believers were added to the Lord. I wanted you to notice that. Believers were added to the Lord, not just the church role. It did not say that they were just added to the church role. It says they were added to the Lord. Too many members are merely on the role, but not connected with the Lord. There's a difference between being on the role and being connected. You see, my brothers and sisters, if the only thing you have going for yourself is just being on the road, it's all right if you go, all right if you don't. And then when people try to talk to somebody and and their name is just on the roll, the first thing we want to do, we want to insult them. Now you tend to your business. I'll tend to mine. They just on the roll. And that's all. And there are too many people were members of churches, but their names are just on the road. You see so little of them that you really don't even know they're on the road. Amen. Now I know there's nobody in here like that this morning. But there are a lot of folk like that, you know, and then when something happens to us and we end up in the hospital, we want the whole church to shut down and come see about me. But the only thing is that your name is just on the roll and, and that's all. And sometimes if your name is just on the roll and that's all, if you ask folks sometimes, well, how, how are your children doing? Oh, they, oh, John boy, oh, John, oh, John boy doing good. John, John boy, John, John boy, he, he, he has a new ride. Got some new kicks. Some new threads. That's clothes, you know. And, and, and Mary Sue doing good. They doing, they doing real good. But do they go to church? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> but they good children. That's not what I ask you. Do they go to church? Sometimes that's our problem. Our name's on the roll, and that's all. And then when little trouble comes, then we want to know, where is God? Well, God's the same place when you never showed up. Same place. And our text says both men and women were added to the Lord. Added to the Lord. And to be added to the Lord is to be connected. See, even if a Sunday comes where you can't get to the church house. If you've been added to the Lord, you are connected. 
Amen. And there are too many people along life's way who are not connected. There are too many people in our families who are not connected. There are too many people hanging out under some corner. Oh, but I'm a member of the church. I met a fella some years ago. Got talking with him at the grocery store. I said, well, now you a member of a church? He said, yes, sir. I said, what church you a member of? Well, I'm a member of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. I said, sure enough. <laughs> and Brother Richard, I asked him, I said, now, who's the pastor there? He said, well, yeah, he says, a young fellow over there from, from Marion County got a funny, got a kind of funny name. I said, sure enough. But he's a member of the church. And sometimes that's the way it is in, in, in our churches. Sometimes when, when, when we make plans as a church, sometimes while you're trying to take responsibility for the plans, they're not really a member. But after you pay it off, have mercy, Lord. You know what they say? Look what we did. But our text says men and women were added unto the Lord. And that's what that's what we need to do with our families and our children and, and our brothers and our sisters we ought to be striving to help them connect with the Lord let, let, let me just ask you how many of you this morning can truly say that I'm connected with the Lord if you don't mind, let me see your hands a minute. Yeah, 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 amen. I started to ask you to raise both hands, but one would be enough. The gospel of Jesus Christ elevates women. Women owe to Christ their rightful place in the world. In that culture, Hebrew culture, women were often labeled as nobodies. But the gospel declares that everybody is God's child. I don't know what the politicians are trying to do now. They are trying to push women further down the ladder. That's what they're trying to do. And even one one fellow, I believe the governor, maybe of Florida, who said that he was not going to allow men to be nurses. I say, what's wrong with our folk? What's happening to us in our country? It takes women to be mothers. Amen. Now you know, you know, I, I appreciate, but you know, y'all y'all were kind of quiet on that. I'm gonna say it again. It takes women to be mothers. Yeah. And we ought to appreciate we ought to appreciate what the gospel of Jesus Christ has done for us in our homes and how the gospel of Jesus Christ has made us better well, the second point 
who were the believers? They were those who heard, felt, and accepted the gospel teaching and testimony. That's who the believers were. Believers are folk who loved the Lord. And you know, my brothers and my sisters, if the Lord's been good to you, nobody would have to beg you to pray. And nobody would have to beg you to go to church. Amen. If, if you know who the, who the Lord is. How many of y'all know who the Lord is? <laughs> Believing is more than just a feel good. Sometimes people... Say I went to church and and the choir sang good. I felt so good. Preacher did all right. I felt good. And then if you ask, say, well now, what did the choir sing about? I don't know. What did the preacher preach about? I don't know. Did the deacons pray? Yeah, but what did he pray? I don't know. Come on now. There ought to be some substance to the gospel message. And we ought to, we ought to hear more than just a 7-Eleven song. You know them 7-Eleven songs. You say seven words 11 times. There ought to be some substance to the gospel. Amen. But too often times, too often times, we really don't know. There's no substance for living. If you're going to make it through this life, it's, 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 it's going to take more than just a fiery hot song that you don't even know what they're singing about. It's going to take some singing like we've heard this morning with some substance to the singing. I've, I've gone to some worship services. I, I'm not going to tell you where, but I've gone to some worship. I, I don't know what a choir is saying. Don't even know. But the gospel ought to be real. There ought to be some substance to what we say. There ought to be some substance to the preach word. And too often times. All we know. Well I went to church today. And ten people. Spoke in tongues. Ten more. Were thinking about it. <laughs> and if all you got. Was some tongue talk. What you going to do with that next week? Help me now. What you going to do with that next week? When you go down to the bank. And somebody comes out to help you. Are you just going to speak in tongues for 10 minutes? You think that's going to help you? I'm suggesting these believers were added to the Lord. And, and that's what you and I have got to do. We've got to make sure that we've been added unto the Lord. If all this happened to us is just, just our names on the roll. 
and that's all. Then we, we, we're not really much better off. There needs to be some substance. You listen to what's going on around our country. Right now, with all the hateful rhetoric going on, no love in it. Well, how in the world all of this hating going on and you talking about I'm a I'm a member of the church. That 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 really that really does not make good sense. The Ku Klux Klan had a chaplain. I don't know what he was praying about, but they had a chaplain. Isn't it strange that we live in a country where we can be hateful to each other and then go through the whole week talking about how I love Jesus? Something's wrong with that, my brothers and my sisters. How strange it is that politicians will oftentimes embrace religion on the one hand, cuss you out on the other hand. But I tell you today, we've got to be real. Believers were added to the Lord. It means those who were bought into saving acceptance of the Lord. It means those who profess their faith in the Lord. It means those, it means those united with the Lord's people. But how strange it is that we have folk whose names are on the church roll. And they love Jesus, but the only problem is they don't love nobody else. How strange how strange it is. How strange it is. How strange it is. And if there's ever been a time we've got to help people understand the meaning of the gospel, it is right now. Right now. You, you and I can't go around here professing one thing and then doing another. We've got to be real. A great number were added to the Lord. That, that there was an excitement about those who were added to the Lord. Now let me just tell you today. If you believe in God, you ought to be excited about something else besides basketball and football and the latest dance that just come out. The Lord's been so good to us. You and I ought to be excited about it. Have you ever seen people they go to the to the game. If the game goes into three or four overtimes, oh, what a good game. But if you come to the church house and the Lord gets the moving, you know. And the preacher goes a little over. We keep looking at the watch. When is he going to sit down? You didn't say that about the game. Not one time did you say that about the game. But oh, when we come to church, we in, we in such a hurry. Oh, he keep on going. I, I'm going to burn, burn my stew beef. 
All I'm trying to say to you this morning, my brothers and sisters, that those who were added to the Lord, they were excited. They were willing to learn. See, there are too many people in the church, but they're not willing to learn. That's why sometimes our Sunday school classes are not full, because we are not willing to learn. But if you're in the Lord and the Lord is in you, you and I ought to have a willingness to learn and, and to grow. Now, I, I'm saying some stuff here, and I know people say, oh, yeah, well, Reverend, now I done heard that, that before. I know you have. But if we don't teach our children, who will? If we don't get them hooked up with the Lord, and the Lord's crowd out in the street, who they going to hook up with? There are too many of our young people hooked up with the gangs and a whole lot of other ungodly folk. If we don't help them hook up with the right crowd, doing the right thing, what will happen with them? Well, my brothers and sisters, witnesses are blessed. I don't know about you this morning, but I believe in the Lord. And I don't mind testifying every now and then that the Lord's been good to me. Has the Lord been good to you? Has he really? You ought not hold it to yourself. Your children ought to hear you testify. Your children ought to hear you pray. The church is empowered. Christ is glorified. Joys are made real and restored. My brothers and my sisters, when you and I are in the Lord, there ought to be something real about us. There ought to be something real about our religion and our faith. How can we secure interest in the truth if the gospel is not held up in our lives? If there's ever been a time we ought to, we ought to stand up for the Lord, it's right now. If the Lord's been good to you, you ought to tell somebody that the Lord has bought me from a mighty long way. You and I ought to set forth the truths of the gospel. We ought to be an example of Jesus Christ every day of our lives. And yes, if the gospel is going to be real, we ought to invite others uh, to come and meet the Lord for him or herself. Do you have some family members that are outside of Christ? Have you ever thought about what would happen or what could possibly happen if I invited them to give their lives to Jesus Christ? If I invited baby girl and big boy to give their lives to Jesus Christ, would it not make a difference if I would help some of the folk in my sorority and in my fraternity to give their lives to Jesus Christ? I know they know all the signs and they know all the handshakes and they know all the rest of it. But do they know the Lord in the pardon of their sins? Do they really know the Lord? A whole lot of folk know a lot of stuff and don't know anything. But we ought to, we ought to reach out to people and help them see the Lord for themselves. We ought to help them know that when you add it unto the Lord, it makes a difference in your life. It makes a giant difference. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to say to you this morning, don't worry about where you're going to spend your next vacation. Don't worry about where you're going to spend your next dollar and what you're going to do on 
your trips there and here and everywhere. But you and I ought to give our lives unto the Lord. You and I ought to help others give their lives unto the Lord. And be just like that early church when a great number was added unto the Lord. And when you add it to the Lord, I tell you, it'll put some joy in your soul. It'll put excitement in your life. How many of you this morning are really excited about the Lord? Has the Lord really been good to you? You ought not fool me this morning, but if the Lord's been good to you, you ought to be excited and you ought to accept the Lord into your life. My brothers and my sisters, I went several months and I couldn't get out of the hospital room. I was in the room and I used to wake up sometimes on Sunday morning and I used to say to myself, I sure wish I could go to church, but I couldn't go to church. But another thing came to me it said to me, but you are in the Lord. I said, well, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you in the Lord this morning? Has the Lord not been good to you? Every now and then, you ought to call him by his name. You ought to call him right by his name. I don't mind telling you this morning, I love the Lord. He heard my cries and pitied every groan. And long as I live, when my troubles rise, I'll hasten, I'll hasten, I'll hasten, I'll hasten. My brothers and my sisters, make sure that you are in the Lord. Make sure. That your family members are in the Lord. May we stand together. of the church in our open the invitation is extended if you are here and if you're not in the Lord you need to be in him talking with a young man the other day he, he telling me he want to go to the NFL I say where I say what you gonna do when you can't play no more. Well, I hadn't thought about that. I said, well, you can't play forever. What you going to do? I remember LeBron was a young man just coming out of high school. Guess what? He's not as young as he used to be. Are you in the Lord this morning? Are you really in the Lord? And if you're not, you need to be. I looked at President Obama the other day, a real president. I looked at him the other day. But you know what? doesn't look as young as he used to. And I know that's what you're saying about me. I don't look, don't look quite, I know I saw myself this morning. If you were here outside of Christ, you need to be added unto the Lord.
Talk to your children. Don't wait till they get old. And don't you wait till you get old. As we sang together, come ye disconsolate. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm excited today. God has blessed us in a wonderful way. We have three young men. Now, 
these young men are young, but they're not too young. Not too young. They're right at a good age right now that we can teach them. And they want to learn. Amen. Let me ask you something. Are any of our um, any of our children's teachers here? Yeah, come on up here, Sister Powell. Yeah, come on, Sister Sister Faye. Come on up here. That's right. I want you to come here and stand here. Come on up here and stand with us. Now these three young men, first of all, we have Antonio Ortiz and Felix Ortiz. If y'all just raise your hands over there. Yeah. Two fine young men. They even get up on the choir and help their daddy sing. <laughs> Amen. They find you. Now they come today accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior as candidates for baptism. And we also have Brother Zion Moore, the real Zion. <laughs> and Brother Zion comes today accepting Jesus Christ as his Savior as a candidate for baptism. God bless you. Now listen. Here's what I'm saying. Now listen to me good. We have to get to these young people early. Can't wait till they get 25. Now I hate to tell you this. I hate to tell you this. Sometimes if you wait till people get 25 and 30 and 40 and 50. The problem is. Sometimes they know so much you can't tell them anything. These young men want to learn. They want to grow. Now here's what I want to ask. Now we ask that all of our young people and all of our members would have a sponsor. Now we have brother and brother Ortiz over here. Uh, Brother Platt, would you be a sponsor for these Ortiz brothers? Yes, sir. And you know Zion, you, you want Zion too? <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to give you all three, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Deacon Green to help you. So Deacon Green, you and Deacon Platt, y'all going to be the sponsors. Now here's the thing. If Deacon Green don't show up to church a Sunday too, the same way he check up on you, you check up on him. Right? And just call me. I ain't scared of you. Alright? So we thank God for these fine young men. Now here's what I want you to do. To the parents, and we need for you at the end of this service to take these young men to the back. We need to get some important information and here's what we want to do. We want to work hard with these young people. Um, I thought about us having a talent show um, later during the summer. Can you say? Okay, all right. So at this time, if y'all don't mind it, I, I, I know you're tired. But as these young men go back to their seats, please give them a great big hand.
what a blessing dedicating one one child to the Lord and three others candidates for baptism last Sunday five received the right hand of fellowship today sister Hatfield gonna receive the right hand of fellowship sister Hatfield could I get you to come and stand right over here and and would you face the audience now as sister Hatfield is facing the audience could I get um, the deaconesses to come up here and stand with sister Hatfield I just don't like for people to be standing by themselves. And uh, Miss, Miss High Point, now you all the way from High Point, North Carolina. Come on up here and stand here. She's from High Point, but she's really our member. But I tell her not to tell the pastor. And I want to ask our deacons all of our deacons, come on up here and stand. Now let me just tell you, you know I've been bothered all week. I felt so bad when I found out when I found out that um, we didn't extend the right hand of fellowship to Sister Hatfield last Sunday. And I say, Lord, if you can just help me to live to Sunday morning. We're going to get it straightened out. So we welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, Sister Marie Hatfield's come to join in the life and ministry of this church. As you receive her, do you promise as a congregation, as you, do you promise before God and in his presence to give her your love and encouragement as she grows in Christian life and commitment? If so, would the entire congregation respond by saying, we do. Yeah. As in the body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Jesus Christ, and individually, we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given unto us. Sister Marie Hatfield, do you promise to be a faithful member of this church and a great follower of Jesus Christ and seek to glorify God in this congregation? If so, would you respond by saying, I do? Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for Sister Marie Hatfield, who's come to join our family of faith. May she find among us a deep love and concern for her and her well-being. Enable her to find her place of service among us. Grant that she may continue to grow up in every way unto him who is the head of the church Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God today for you, Sister Hatfield. And uh, let me just say that uh, you need a sponsor. Who is you? Who did I give you? Oh, you, okay. I was going to give you Sister Johnson. See how the spirit moves? All right. <laughs> On behalf of this congregation, we welcome you into the membership of this church. Now, would all of our deacons and deaconesses please give Sister Hatfield a great handshake of welcome.
so much. Bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what a glorious day we've had in the Lord. All of us know some people who need to be in the Lord. Have you talked to them? Have you really talked to him? May we stand together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Both now and forevermore, let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Beneath